So good evening once again, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. I truly, truly appreciate it. And, and welcome to all the new folks that are here. Um, we'd love to, um, well, hopefully you'll get something out of this tonight and you'll be able to take it away and uh, make some good use of it for um, your trading. You know, one of the things that I credit turning my trading around was when I became a student of price action. And tonight I wanted to talk about price action and how important it is to be dedicated to a, um, well, the skill of reading the chart. You know, oftentimes what we do nowadays as traders, and how many of you guys would agree with this, that we too heavily rely on indicators and um, different things like that to tell us what should be a good trade rather than really focusing in on what the price action is actually saying. Hey, awesome, Daryl. Uh, Kevin, it is a very volatile market right now, um, and I can understand that frustration. As a matter of fact, a lot of things that um, we kind of are lacking momentum, right? So it is a frustrating market right now. But let me show you some things that might be able to help you with that problem, okay? And just a few rules that work for me. Now, I'm not telling you this is the only way to trade, but a few rules that work for me. And I'm actually going to bring up a blank screen here so you guys can see this. And I'm going to draw a couple of things on the chart and see if this makes some sense to some of you guys and, and how we might be able to improve our trading. One of the things that I think a lot of us are guilty of as traders is we try to be the jack of all trades. Okay, we wanna be, we wanna be a great intraday trader, we wanna be a great swing trader, we wanna take longer term, we just wanna do it all, right? Every pattern, every candlestick pattern, everything in the market, that's what we wanna do. Well, the market is really designed, guys. Think about it. Um, 80 plus percent of the market is the institutions over here. Okay. And we're, as retail traders, we're this little teeny tiny speck over here. We don't have a whole lot of opportunity to force these institutions to do anything they don't want to do. Would you guys agree with that? Our, our chances of moving them around to do much of anything is pretty slim, right? And what we tend to do as retail traders, and uh, well, let me just, let me go back to a chart here for just a second. The first time I learned about candlestick signals, I mentioned this today in Right Way Options, I learned about candlesticks and candlestick signals. I finished up this class and I came out of this class and I felt like, and I was reading books and everything else, I thought, I got it now. <laughs> I got the secret. I felt like I was bulletproof. Um, guess what? Um, I got shot full of holes. I was not bulletproof with candlesticks. So I thought, well, maybe it has to be more education. Maybe I need to uh, throw a whole bunch of indicators on here. Maybe it's indicators that is going to make a difference for me. And so I went out and I learned all kinds of skills. I learned how to even write custom code for my indicators. And guess what? I went to the market, thought I'm bulletproof. Now I got this figured out. And I got shot full of holes again. Because I was doing everything except what I should be doing, and that is focusing on the price action of the chart. I say this quite a lot, but it is absolutely true, okay? We don't get paid. We don't get paid by indicators. An indicator has never paid anybody. We get paid when price moves. And we spend so much time. How many of you guys out there would be willing to admit that you have wasted maybe even years trying to be find the perfect set of indicators that is going to make you successful in trading? 
And we've tried and tried and tried. We are always in a search for something new and it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. So here's what I finally learned. I finally learned that if I just settle down a little bit, stop trying to be the smartest guy in the room, and I don't mean just this room, but any room, the smartest guy in the market, and just work to follow the trends of the market with some key rules, I did much better in my trading. Not only did I much do much better, it actually built my career in trading just by slowing down, calming down, stopping all the craziness of thinking that I could predict with candlesticks or indicators or anything else, and just work to follow price action in the chart. And I went one step further. What I did is I started defining a set of rules. Would you guys agree when you look at the market, we all learned this pattern, right? When we learn to trade, the peak and valley pattern in a chart, correct? It's the most common recognizable pattern out there. Every, every trading book, everything talks about the peak and valley pattern. Well, to specialize, what I did was I set a few rules. Number one, if I wanted to trade anything, I was going to stop this idea I could predict when a market is going to turn or when a stock is going to turn, and I would simply wait for the institutions to show it to me. Remember, we can only sustain trends when institutions are supporting the stock. It's the only way we can trend. We need that institutional money supporting the stock. Okay? And so the number one rule for me was trend. If I didn't have a trend, I had nothing to trade. Okay? So number one, trade a trend. Stop counter trend trading, stop predicting when the bottom is in, and just wait for the trend to develop and follow the trend. Okay? And then I specialized even further. I essentially took that trending idea and I really studied price action. And I noticed after a long period of time and after beating my head against the wall and um, struggling for a long period of time, that if I simply specialized into a couple of different patterns, I could study those patterns and get better and better and better at those patterns. I didn't try to be the master of everything. As a matter of fact, if you guys, if you're brand new here, never see my charts, I trade very, very simply. But you can ask anyone in hit run candlesticks and right way options. I follow my rules. Okay? I follow my rules. Um, actually, it is, Joel. It's less than 20%. You're exactly right. I think it's 89 something that's institutional. 89 something percent that's institutional money. Yeah. Exactly right, Gwen. Um, there's no medals at the end of this for being a hero, is there? For picking the bottom. There's, there's no medal at the end of it. The only thing that's a reward out of trading is whether our account is getting bigger or not. And if our account hasn't been getting bigger, our account is telling us something. Our account is telling us that what we're doing isn't working. Einstein said if we continue to do the same things over and over expecting a different result, that was the definition of insanity. We have to change. So I changed. I changed and I started studying a couple of basic patterns in the chart. One was what, and actually Rick named this, he called it the PBO, the pullback opportunity. And this one is mine, the pop out of the box, okay? There's nothing fancy about these patterns, but there are some critical factors that are important. First off, 
A peak and valley pattern is not a good peak and valley pattern unless the chart is trending with the direction of the market. Okay, it's easier when the market is trending up to trade directionally long. Pretty simple stuff. When the market is trading directionally down, it's easier to trade to the downside of the market because that momentum is moving us in that direction. You guys have heard that old saying, right? Rising tides lift all ships. So all I look for is trending charts. Okay, and I'm looking for basically two patterns to trade. Now the criteria for these patterns are pretty darn simple. First off, the chart has to be in a trend. Second off, I need to wait for proof that buyers are coming into the trade, okay? Now what that means is, is I get a lot of questions on that. What do you mean by that? What I mean is that I actually see buyers, a buy signal of some kind, proof that buyers are stepping in. Now the closer and closer I am to trend, and the closer I am to a price support in the chart and a trend, the better the trade. Okay, as a matter of fact, if I am very, very stringent in how I, how I do this, I can win the majority of my trades just following these patterns. Okay, and it's not that hard to learn to do, but it does take some time and study. We have all seen recently, right, <clears throat> stocks that rip like this to the upside, really strong moves to the upside. And we get that terrible fear of missing out, right? So we get a little bit of a pullback in that trade. How many of you guys, after two or three days of pullback, have bought this candle right here, that pop-up, and failed to recognize that the trend is actually out here? and they pop in that candle signal, and then the stock backs up and continues to find its way to the trend. I gotta tell you guys, that pattern is showing up everywhere in the market. It's showing up so much. I believe that institutions have figured that out and they've written algorithms for their computers so that they can take advantage of people with that fear of missing out mentality, jumping in too soon. And then they just back it up, stop you out, skim money out of your account and do it over and over and over and over. Okay, so what I'm trying to uh, convey here is that the trajectory of the trend is important. There's not too many stocks that can just go straight up and stay going straight up very long, right? They have to rest. They have to pull back. That's what a market does. Okay. It doesn't have to be a bullish. It's whatever you see as buyers, RK. Um, I typically describe that as, um, you know, um, bullish engulfing a morning star, a kicker pattern, a piercing pattern, something along those lines, but I want it responding to something. And I'm gonna show you guys a chart um, that is just, um, it's one of those charts and just the last couple of days it started to fail. Okay, here's a chart that has just been doing exactly what I've been saying and doing it in such a concise and consistent manner. I got to ask you guys, just looking at this chart, how hard would it be to make money on this chart? But here's the problem. Here's the problem. Isn't it true, guys, that what we're doing through the day is we're speeding through charts and the only thing we're looking for the only thing we're looking at is this hard right edge. We want that buy signal. Boom, give me, those, give me those buyers stepping in. That's the only thing we're after. Just show me that signal. We're flipping through like crazy, but we're spending no time actually analyzing the chart.
right? We're in such a, such a blazing rush to get to that next signal that we never take the time to actually see a chart that is setting up. All we're looking for is that candle. Isn't that true? How many of you have scans out there that the only thing that you've done is you're trying so hard to write the perfect scan to just show you that candle? This is the time to trade it. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you that by the time that candle signal comes in, you may be too late. Because the trade was setting up as we were resting after breaking through resistance and we were resting over the trend. The trade was setting up there. And all I have to do is place a price alert and actually wait for the trade to come to me. Now, the reason I talk about this and the reason uh, most folks, if RWO folks would probably tell you, I'm pretty relaxed about my trading. And I'm relaxed about my trading because I never feel rushed to trade. I'm never in a rush. As a matter of fact, if I ever feel that I'm rushing, I know it's time for me to go do something else for a little while, back away. There's no need to rush in the market if we look for these patterns, if we look for those good signals. Okay. Now, a couple things that I also want to point out. When a chart is downtrending, okay, when a chart is downtrending, I don't trade those trades. Now, I know people will say, yeah, but you're missing out in here. You're missing out on that really quick moving trade where you can make bucket loads of money real fast on a change of implied volatility or something like that. But let me just tell you very, <laughs> well, you can ask the folks in right way options. Anybody in here see me trade stocks that are in a downtrend? If I'm, if the market's up, do you see me trading? Do you see me even attempting to trade stocks that are in a downtrend? No, I don't do it. What I do is I require, and you can see these marks in the chart, I require a stock this is a have to. I require the stock to break the downtrend. And then I wait for it to prove that it can hold that downtrend as support. Only when I get proof that we can hold here am I interested in a trade in the stock. Okay. So one of the things that we have to do as traders, if we want to improve ourselves as traders, is we have to stop doing the things that don't work very well. Do you guys agree? If we could just eliminate these losing trades that keep plaguing us, we lose, we lose, we lose, we win, we win. <clears throat> most people in this room, if I ask you the question, what's your win-loss ratio? Most people are going to tell me I win about 50% of my trades. Now think about it, that's just the odds of buying a trade in the market, 50-50. We can improve those odds by doing some really simple things, and that's following trend and specializing into some price action on the chart. And I'm very picky. Let me show you a trade today that um, it was asked of me. Um, what do you think of Costco long? Let me show you how easy it is to figure out, guys, that this is a dangerous trade. Okay? We have a higher low here in this chart, and we certainly are showing that higher low and the possible resumption of an uptrend but we also have a very long-term downtrend. And how many times does a stock have to reject at a trend line before we believe that trend is true? But isn't it true, guys? We're always out here. We're trying to pick these bottom points. Got to get the, the best entry. 
got it. I got to time the perfect entry. Let me tell you in 30 years, guys, I have rarely ever hit a perfect entry. In fact, I'm going to tell you that I don't think there is such a thing as a perfect entry and a perfect exit. We have to get over that. Okay, we've all done this, right? We're looking for that white candlestick. And how many of you have flipped through charts, hit that white candlestick and thought, hmm, and I'm not sure, sir, and you flip through a whole bunch more charts and you come back and you've already missed the trade because that stock has really taken off. Right? Even when we get our signals, we oftentimes don't get the trade because we're rushing to the next trade before we even take the time to evaluate the chart. Well, this is really, really simple stuff, guys. If I evaluate this chart, where's my proof of support? Where's the only proof of support that I have right here in this for a trend? It's this first higher low, right? That first higher low, that's proof of support. In this rally here that ran up real strong, do we have any proof of support between here and there? Nope. Yeah, there's no proof of support. Now, I'm really sensitive to this, guys, because this is a mistake that plagued me for a long, long time. I repeated it so many times. I got to tell you, it was just, it was maddening to me. I repeated it so many times. I was constantly chasing stocks. <clears throat> and I resolved that problem very, very simply. I set a rule that says I only buy stocks at or near price support with a buy signal. How many of you guys have anticipated the entry into the trade and ended up with just an ugly loser? Because we guessed that it was going to bounce from this point. Bounce from a Fibonacci, bounce off of a moving average, bounce off of something. It's going to bounce here. I'm pretty sure of it. And just turn it into a losing trade. So I stopped anticipating the entry. And then I started calculating, okay, if I'm going to be a consistent trader, I have to trade by a set of rules. I buy stocks at or near price support with a buy signal. That means when the stock is stretched up here, testing a price resistance level, this is the exact wrong time to enter the trade, right? I need to be buying it down here, not up here. And I'm telling you guys, that caused me so many problems for so long. I would buy the stock. The stock would pull back like it normally does. And I get stopped out. Okay. Just continuously walking right into a trap to get beat up. So the easy thing to do on these guys, it's real simple. You can try to time these and catch these trades right here, and I don't have a problem with that. But once we start approaching a price resistance of a downtrend, this should not even be any part of your trading. Stay away from it. We don't buy stocks at or near price resistance. Because here's what I know to be true, guys. If the majority of the market is being pushed by institutional trading, all I have to do is take a chart that is becoming interesting because we may break the downtrend, is just to simply wait for the next entry into the trade. And so for me, that's that chart breaking out. Show me you can do it. And then prove to me that you can hold support and then show me a buy signal. If that signal occurs somewhere near trend and price support, the best trade I can find.
okay? If you're willing to be patient and wait for those trades, they work most of the time. I'm gonna switch over to a weekly chart here, guys, and I wanna show you a price pattern that um, right way options is in right now. There's 3M. This was our alert to bring us into 3M. Now these are weeks, okay? Weeks in that trade. I want you to see that that is the exact same pattern that I just talked about on the daily. Wait for the downtrend to break. Wait for buyers to prove that is support. And what I want you to notice is that we have taken no heat on this trade and we're four weeks into it now. No heat. Let me show you another one. This one I've already closed. This is Altria. Mo. Wait for the downtrend. Downtrend, we push up here and then we consolidate over and then there's those buyers. Look at right there. Pop. No heat on that trade. How many weeks? Isn't that the dream trade, guys? I mean, honestly, how many of these trades do you need to make a lot of money in the market? Okay. So if we move to a daily chart or even to a five minute or a short term chart, the same patterns apply. Okay, and I get questions all the time because we see markets or we see stocks shooting up and the first thing we, I, we just get a, a bunch of comments that come into the room. What do you think of this chart? What do you think of this chart? What do you think of this chart? And so often, so often, it's a chase because we're afraid we're going to miss out on the position and we chase into the trade rather than simply waiting for the next entry. So many times, guys, if we just wait for the trade that gives us a low risk entry, we can trade these charts over and over and over and over and over again that are trending. Have you ever asked yourself, with so many trends all around us, how could I have lost money? How could I be losing money when this is going on all around us? And one of the reasons, and I think Lee would agree with this, one of the reasons is because we're always in a rush. We're always chasing something. Rather than waiting for the trade to actually come to us. See, the only way a stock can do this, guys, is institutions are showing their hand. Would you guys agree when we see trends that are this smooth and this consistent, institutions are showing us that they're supporting that chart? Right? They're giving us the information. And all we have to do is look at that chart and look for the next entry into that trend. And we can trade these charts or hold these charts long periods of time or trade them over and over and over again. Okay, now here's the thing that I think is important, guys, and this is the thing that gave me a lot of hope and hopefully this gives you a lot of hope. In trading like this, do you have to be any kind of a super duper genius? To do this <laughs> you really don't right we just have to look for a trending chart mark it up and wait for the next entry into the trade 
Now, we're looking at Microsoft here. This is a weekly chart, so I'm not looking at the daily here. Anybody think there's an opportunity coming here in Microsoft right now? Huh. How about that? Even when a chart has gone up and gone up and gone up and gone up and gone up for years, it's still presenting us with opportunities for a trade. Now, because this chart hasn't quite made it over here to trend, notice that the longer we consolidate in here, the more we rest and hold that price support and we slide over here toward this trend, the better this chart becomes. Because isn't it true, guys, when we see that price action move like that, that resting period in here, what this is, is an agreement between the buyers and the sellers. Sellers are saying, shouldn't be any more high, shouldn't be higher than this right now. Buyers are saying, shouldn't be any lower than this right now. So we're pretty much in agreement on price. If we take note of the trend, I want you to just note in this trend that I've drawn, do you think that pattern worked again right there? There's that downtrend break. There's the pullback to prove support. Bam, there's the trade. Easy entry. Easy money. And if we wait for this one, it could be just as easy. Okay. You know, Jeff, you're exactly right. As a matter of fact, that somebody that's almost 103 years old, um, Charlie Munger. Charlie Munger says the real money isn't in the buying and the selling. The money is in the waiting. That's where the money is made is being patient to wait for the trade, okay? Now, by the way, guys, just because I'm showing you a longer term chart, I actually did this a um, couple of weeks ago. Um, it was a slow day, uh, market was choppy. We went to a five minute chart in the queues. And I did this exact same strategy, trading the five minute queues and made money with it right in front of everybody, a live option trade, right in front of everybody, by simply looking at the chart, stock pops and gaps up, pulls back holds, there's a possible buy entry that occurred right in here, moves on up and holds, there's a possible buy entry that occurred right in here, there's our trend, there's a possible buy entry that occurs right here. We get a little carried away in that price move up and we take a longer rest. Possible buy entry right here. In the trade. Okay. Yes, we want to buy at or near price support in a trending stock that's reacting to support and trend. Support and trend. Let me show you guys a stock that um, came, up, came up in the room the other day. And we had a discussion on this. Um, MU. MU popped up here on that day, and I just had a bunch of folks asking me, should we buy MU? And I said, well, let's think about this, guys. Where's our stop loss on that trade? If we chase this trade after that big move, our stop loss needs to be down here because that's the last proof of price support. We tried to sell off. Buyers picked it up right there. That's our last proof of price support. So we have to take a pretty big risk on that trade. 
Then I pointed out that if I were going to take that risk on this trade, keep in mind that I was buying it at price resistance. I wasn't buying it at price support. And I warned on this to just wait and see if the next entry can show up. If we could hold, and you can see I placed a price alert here. The stock started to pull back and I said, let's see if it can hold this trend. I placed a price alert on that chart. The stock failed today. No trade. Didn't cost me any money. Not a penny. To wait for a trade. Okay, chasing that entry here would have cost you a bundle, right? Barry's pointing out 10 point pullback. Would have cost you a bundle. Imagine what that would have done in an option trade. That's a chase. That's that fear of missing out trade and we're not buying a technically correct pattern. We want that higher low, that proof of support, okay? Now, another thing that I find that people struggle with a lot is we're chasing that flavor of the day, okay? It's in the news, everybody's talking about it. We're chasing around, oh, it's gotta be this chart, it's gotta be this chart, it's gotta be this chart. Often those charts are very, very volatile. Okay? If they're in the news, if they're floating around, they're usually pretty dangerous charts. We want to look for concise price action. By the way, guys, here's that pattern again. Break the downtrend, hold support. Bam, there's the easy entry. There's the follow through trade right there. There's another trade, another trade, another trade as we move up in this sharp trend. Then we slow it down. We rest for a little while. Boom, there's another the trade. And we can just trade those same charts over and over again. What I want you to notice in this price action back here, would you guys see, looking at these price candles in here, would you guys see this is a much easier trade to take here with much less price volatility than what we see in these candles up here? Look at the depth or the, or the distance in those candles. The easy trades we're often not looking for because we're chasing around the flavor of the day. Something that's in the news, something, oh my gosh, this is popping. Social media is lit up about it. If social media is lit up about it, we should be running from it. Because anytime we trade that really high implied volatility, let me ask you guys, if the, if the stock is really, really volatile, Are your odds of a win increased or decreased? Even if you're really good at technical analysis, are your odds increased or decreased by chasing around highly volatile stocks? Yeah, you're gonna win less of them. Volatility tells us that, right? So wouldn't it be better not to chase those around? Wouldn't it be better to look for those charts that have concise price action. What was that chart today, guys? I can't remember. We ran across it and I made a point of, uh, I made, just made a point of how beautiful that chart was and wondering why. None of us were in it. <coughs> if you guys, somebody remembers, was it VIPS? Look at that chart. Is there anything hard about trading that daily chart? And look at this beautiful pattern. Here's the pop out of the box. Consolidate over, hold trend, and then there you go. Buyer step into this position, pushing it up, and it's seen no pullback since. By the way, notice that this doesn't require, incredible chart there, thank you. Um, this doesn't require any fancy indicators, does it? It's really, really simple. Institutions are showing us their hand here. 
they're giving us, they're just really showing us everything that we want to see. We break the downtrend. We hold it as support. No good buy signal there, that gapped away, no trade. How about that entry right there? You went on that trade. Now let's just wait for the next entry. Anybody think you might have been able to catch an entry right over here? What about an entry right in here? Or here, or here, or here, or here. But we're so involved in the chase, the rush, looking for the white candle, we miss all of these trends all around us. Now I go through an exercise with folks in right way options. And let's just take this chart for example. And one of the things I used to do, and this is, I, seriously, I am a nut job when it comes to price action. Um, I've told people in the room this, that I, I literally have had dreams where I'm in the chart. I think about charts and price action so much that honestly, I'm, I'm a big chart nerd. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. Okay. Um, really simple. How to overcome the fear of a stock that you say is topping out. How do you know it's topping out? How do you know? You don't. We only find out when the trend is broken. When the trend breaks, it's over. Whether it's a long-term weekly chart or a short-term chart like this in Discovery, we only know that the trend is broken when the trend actually breaks. Stay with the trend until the trend breaks. Okay. Uh, Bert, do I ever place a buy stop limit or a buy stop order on the entry? Yeah, I used to do. Actually, that's what I did for years and years and years. When I worked full time, I couldn't watch the market at all. That was even back before cell phones and, and, and online brokerages were very, very new. I actually placed entry orders the night before. So I would plan my trades about this time at night. Set an order. If the stock crosses up through here, buy that chart and drop a stop loss in under here. I made it as mechanical as possible just to follow the trend. Okay. So that, that thing where we get ourselves, I, I hear this all the time, um, and it's, it's pretty normal, guys. Um, I hear this, well, it's so overbought. It's gone up for so long, it has to pull back. Who says? Who wrote a rule on that? Let me show you guys a trade. Um, pull this back. This was my entry into BDX. This was my exit in BDX. How many years did that trend? Who says? There's no rule out there that says a stock has gone up too much, it has to pull back. There's, there's nothing out there that says a stock can't just, if institutions are supporting it, it's going to continue to go up. Okay. Um, honestly, um, I'm getting questions about indicators, T-lines, and stuff like that. Guys, 99% um, of all the trades that I make, 
that people get from me and right way options come from this chart with no indicators in the price action just some drawings on the chart that's how I found Microsoft was setting up I don't need an indicator to tell me that price action is showing me a potential trade yep I call this a naked chart and that's what I use for almost all of the trading I do. Now I teach a st strategy called the 3-8 trap and it's just using the 3 exponential moving average and 8 exponential moving average and something I call the trendinator. And all that is is a trend following tool. It helps people see the trend. Okay? It helps them visualize the trend. If I look at this right here on the weekly chart can anybody follow this indicator pretty simply and, and make money? Let's go back to that discovery. And go to the daily chart. Can you make money with that indicator right there? It doesn't have to be fancy, guys. And let me tell you that, this, even though I teach the 3A trap, one of the first things I say in the 3A trap class that I teach, the trade has nothing to do, the entry has nothing to do with the 3, the 8, or the trendinator. Those are just visual clues to help us find the entry point. Everything else, we have to study the price action of the chart, and look for those entry points. Just follow the trend. Okay? If we look at a chart like um, Cisco, I had questions on this today. Is Cisco a buy? It was moving up earlier today. Now imagine had you tried to chase this trade, the last proof of support was here. Here's our stop loss. Who wants to take that kind of risk in this trade? Anybody? I mean, I don't. But isn't it true we do that knee-jerk reaction all the time? We see that move and we, we just jump. We don't think about it. We just jump. Oh, my gosh, I'm missing out. Let's pull this back and take a bigger look at this chart. Isn't it interesting that this is a huge breakout of Cisco? What usually happens after a big breakout? Stock pulls back or it rests, right? What it's going to do most likely is it's going to find out. It's going to seek this out and find out, is this really support? We don't know that yet, right? We broke it as resistance, but we don't know if it's support yet. And if I look at the bigger trend, what do you guys think the chances after such a steep run up here? I mean almost vertical run up. How many of you want to guess that there's a high probability that this chart will rest, consolidate, and pull back and move all the way over to that trend before it goes again? It's honestly, guys, it's a high probability. It doesn't work that way every single time, but it is a high probability that that will occur. It's either that or the stock will fail and come back to trend. Okay, we lose support and come back to trend. Okay. <clears throat> so, we want to be looking at correct chart patterns. We want to be looking 
at those high quality chart patterns that could set up. When we look at a price pattern like this and the stock is pulling back, here's that pattern I told you guys. We shoot up, we pop a buy signal in here, we don't recognize that we're far away from the trend, that we're well above support, there's actually no support under that price action. It's floating in midair. We chase into this position and then we get clubbed. Comes right back to support and trend. Guys, I can show you that pattern over and over and over in the charts. Over and over and over in the charts. Okay. These patterns are very, very important. When we look at these downtrends that break right here, we prove to hold after we break out and hold the support. There's an easy winning trade. Okay. Now, I was going to show you that exercise that I do uh, with Rightway Options folks every once in a while. And I highly recommend people do this. Let's take a look at that Discovery Channel chart and let's pull this back. Because one of the things that used to cause me all kinds of grief is I would think, how in the world could I miss a chart that entire time and never get into this trade? So what I would do is I would back up the chart like this. I know this is going to be a bullish chart. And I would start moving that chart forward one day at a time. Okay? Just one day at a time. What's interesting, guys, if you do this with me and we go through and we talk about support, resistance, trend, you guys are going to see the entries. And I know you will, because most people, if we actually study and look at the price action of the chart, it becomes very obvious where the entry comes in. Okay, there's that big shoot up there. We broke through resistance. What do you guys think? There's a pretty good probability that this rests or pulls back. By the way, could you have had an entry in here? Break the downtrend, hold it as support, look for your entry into the trade. repeats over and over and over in the market. So now we're going to just move this forward a day at a time and let's see if we can pick out an entry into this trade that looks like it's going to make sense to us. Anybody think that could be an entry? Still pretty stretched away, right? We're a little bit away from here. It could be an entry, it could actually win, but we're pretty stretched away from this current trend. Might be a little bit too early. We might be catching that entry signal and just have to hold it while it rests over the trend, right? Look at that. Contact trend. Not the best of entries into this trade, so it's still a wait for me. I'm not in this trade. I'm not going to chase it. I'm not going to rush. Either the chart does what I want it to do, or I'm not going to trade it. See, I don't have to catch every trade. I just have to catch enough of them to make good money in the position, okay? And if we study this chart and study this price action over and over, what, how about this signal right in here? Anybody think that could be a pretty decent setup? Definite maybe. One thing that I would say is that the price action that was really volatile in here, big long candles, wide candles, didn't it kind of get concise right here? We pushed up and then we rested in a really nice light pattern. 
So even if I'm wrong on this trade, I don't have to risk much money because my stop loss goes in here. Make sense? I don't have to risk a lot. So that's a trade right there that I might take. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Wait for the next price pattern entry. We got really volatile there, really volatile. Who wants to take that trade right there? It's pretty easy to see, isn't it? It's not that hard to identify. This volatile price action calmed itself down, calmed itself down so much that we had two little tiny dojis showing up in there as we rested. Winner, winner. See guys, this isn't hard. We make it hard because we try to throw all of these different aspects into the trade. We try to think we can pick the bottoms. We try to think we can pick the tops. We can get the perfect entries. We're always chasing rather than waiting. Okay. I take profits based on the rules of the trade that I put on. Okay. I have goals that I trade for, particularly on short-term trades. I trade for goals. When that goal is achieved, I close the trade. It doesn't matter to me what happens after that point. Most folks in RWO will tell you that when the stock is moving up, that's when I'm selling. Okay. Generally based on a percent gain or there's a resistance up there that's coming. I will front run that resistance by closing the trade as it's approaching that resistance. Okay, it's all very mechanical with what I do. And here's the thing, guys, I don't care what happens after I close the trade. We spend way too much time as traders, even when we win, how many of you guys beat yourselves up? We beat ourselves up when we lose trades. We beat ourselves up when we win trades. How can that be any fun? Who wants to be in that kind of a business? Our job here is to make money. Not to be perfectly right, not to get the perfect entry and exit. It's to make money. I don't care what happens to a trade after I exit. No, if the overall market is bearish, I'm trading bearish charts. Or, yeah, if the overall market is bearish, I'm going to be predominantly short. Okay, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> bearish using my words. <laughs> yeah. We lose money on a trade, we suck as a trader. We win money on a trade and then we look back, oh, it kept going up, man, I suck as a trader. Okay. Price action, it gives us the clues for an entry into a trade. Anybody think this chart could be setting up right over here? Winner, winner. See, you guys can even spot it when we go through and study the chart. Now what you have to do is develop the skill to do that consistently. Okay? Develop the skill to do that consistently. When I do directional long calls and long puts, I trade somewhere between 70 and 80 deltas. Period. Explanation point. 
You can argue with me all you want. Yeah, but I want this cheaper. Well, I don't care. You can do that if you want. I trade somewhere between 70 and 80 deltas. I don't do anything else. I don't do anything fancy, try to negotiate with the market or do any of that. I don't care about any of that. I want the simple trade and I want to make nice money when I do it. Okay. And by the way, guys, I lose money just like everyone else. Lost money on Disney today. I lose money like everyone else. Pattern sets up, pattern fails. No big deal. It happens. You're going to lose some money. But if we follow the overall trend of the market, if we stay with good quality charts, we can repeat trades over and over, trade stocks over and over, and never have to do much of anything else. Got a member of the room, Bob C. He was really struggling as a trader when he came to Right Way Options. We spent some time together on, in coaching and things like that. And Bob C, that next year in BABA, just trading BABA alone, made $100,000. One stock. Bob C, when he comes into the room, he's, he's never looking at a whole bunch of stocks. He just trades a few stocks and he just repeats them over and over and over. Yeah, we call him Baba C because he just, he has that thing wired. He just, yeah. Okay. So take the time guys to study the price action of the charts. Take the time to look at the quality of the price action of the chart. Okay? Take the time to study the price patterns. Where are your odds going to be improved? Okay? Let's take, for example, I'm going to go to this blank screen again and say if we have a trend that's here, okay? And that price action of that chart, I need to change the color because that's kind of hard to see. Price action of that chart pulls back, moves up, pulls back, and we see a good buy signal right in here. Can we have some confidence in this chart? Because we're holding a price support and we're also holding trend. Okay, but what if we have that chart where the trend is here, the stock rallies strongly, pulls back, and the buy signal shows here. Our last price support is all the way down here. Our trend is all the way over here. Can we have a lot of confidence in this entry signal here? not responding to anything, right? It's kind of floating in midair. These are trades that I usually just avoid. It may prove to be a trade that moves on up, but I don't care because too many of those trades lose, so I don't take them. Do more of what works and less of what doesn't and just keep repeating that. Okay, you don't have to trade everything in the market. You don't have to chase the flavor of the day. Build yourself a watch list of good quality trending stocks and then just wait for the next entry. You guys will find that your trading improves. You make more money. You'll actually enjoy your trading a lot more because it doesn't require all of that emotion. How many people in here would say that by the end of the trading day, because you're in such a rush all day long, that at the end of the trading day, you're just absolutely mentally spent. You're wiped out. Yep, just burned, right? By the end of the week, you're just toast. I know that because that used to be me.
can you guys see doing this? You don't have to feel all of that emotional angst in a trade. If we just hold to a set of rules and follow, and here's the thing, people will ask me this question, why does this work? Why, you show this, it looks so simple. Why does it work? It works because all we're doing is following institutional support. It works because institutioners are showing us that they're supporting Discovery Channel here. Uh, Bill, you can resolve some of that by just going through your charts and studying the quality of the trend. Okay, if the trend is, if the price action is all choppy, full of wicks and tails, it's messy. You may be following the wrong chart. If you see a chart that's getting concise, price action is easy to read. It's not that difficult to do. Now we've got something that all we have to do is wait for the next entry in the trade. Okay. Um, honestly, George, this is the chart I look at most of the time. I teach a strategy called the 3A trap. The 3A trap is nothing more than a trend following tool to help you identify these entries, to see when the trade could be coming to you. Okay. But the trade has nothing to do with the indicators. The trade has everything to do with what the price action is doing. I do both. I'm an option trader, I'm a stock trader, and I do long-term trades as well. I'm currently in a trade on space and I'm up about 2,500%. Okay, I do this stuff all the time. Long-term trades, short-term trades, it really doesn't matter. Just wait for the entry into the trade. Let me show you a trade here. I'll just I trade stocks too. Just because I trade options doesn't mean I won't trade a stock. We all know NIO, right? Told everyone in right way options. You guys in right way options can confirm this. On this day, the stock popped up and triggered my alert. It ended up pulling back by the end of the day. Okay, but it didn't change anything. I told everyone by taking this trade, we might be a little bit early on the position. NIO had um, open interest, or not open interest, but implied volatility of like 150% right here. So I chose to buy the stock instead of the option. The cost, the, the, the um, extrinsic value on the options was just ridicu ridiculous, so I chose to buy the stock. Bought a thousand shares. Stock moved up. Then we got this nice little pullback. You guys see the buy signal right there? RWO folks that watch me do this, would you confirm I didn't hesitate for a second? When I saw that candle pattern, I bought another thousand shares. Okay, I closed this trade out somewhere up here. Kept moving up, I didn't care. I made $20,000. One trade. Guys, I don't need a ton of these to make really good money. If I just wait for the right entry signals, I get a higher winning percentage on those trades. I don't have to stress so much. Okay? Follow-up buy was not when I hit the trend line. The follow-up buy is when I saw buyers. Buyers right here 
were reacting and pushing that stock back up. So I made the next entry into the trade. They were reacting right here. I could see them. You can see them. We bought before this candle was even passed here, I think. Right about in there, we bought. You know, George, um, people ask me for my scan criteria as if you can run a scan and create all of the all of the factors that's going to give you the perfect entry signal. Let me just save you some time. I spent years doing this. You're never going to find the perfect entry signal with the scan. Because the conditions change. How many days is it going to consolidate here before that occurs? Three? 10, 15, 14. Okay, I use the simplest scans that you can potentially have. All I want is the trending chart. And then everything else that I do is analyzing that price action for my trade. I want simple scans. I don't want the computer to tell me when it's time to trade. I want me to tell me when it's time to trade. I want me to analyze the price action of the chart. I am the trader. I am the CEO. I am responsible. I want to do that work because that's my job. Isn't it true, guys, we try to assign scans or indicators or something like that so that we can lay off that responsibility? Now I don't have to do the work of actually evaluating the price action of that chart. Let something else do it, then it's not on me. But it is on me. It's always on me. I am 110% responsible for every decision I make. I want to make that decision. So I use a simple scan that gets me in the neighborhood of the trade. And believe me, I love my scans and I love that I use this LTA scanner. It's a fantastic tool. Saves me tons and tons of time. Okay, but I use the simplest scans possible. To just get me in the neighborhood of a trade and then it's my job from that point on to evaluate the entry. Okay, you see these pink lines all over the charts. These are price alerts. When I see the trade setting up, that's when I put the price alert on. Not after the move is made. And that's what most people are scanning for. They're scanning for the fact that white candle, the move has already happened. They're already taking more risk in the trade than I probably will on a position because I actually make the trade come to me. Um, I use the LTA scanner. Okay. That's here. Let me show it to you. This is the live trading alerts alert scanner. If you guys have never seen this, go over to the live trading alerts, um, live trading alerts.com and check it out. These pre programmed scans in here are basically all I run. They're the simplest. Scan. I don't make any adjustments, I don't change anything. I just use those simple scans. That's all I do. I take my trending watch list, my trending watch list. And I always run my scans against my trending watch list. There's my optional watch list. Every Sunday, I, re I change that watch list to those stocks that are trending. Okay. After that, scanner just pops up trades. You know, RK, people will ask me questions all the time. You know, the what if scenarios. We can play what if forever. Okay. 
I cannot tell you what a stock is going to do. I cannot tell you when a stock is going to be a buy until the price action shows us. I can't predict when it's coming. I can't tell you if it's going to be at this price or this price 10 days now or two days from now. Can't tell you. I can tell you this. I know what it is when I see it, and I'm willing to wait for it. Don't play the what if game. What if game is an endless loop. It's like watching that dog out in the front yard running in a circle chasing its tail. It's fun to watch, but it's not very productive. Don't get into the what if games. Plan your trade and trade your plan. When the trade comes together, I plan my trade and then I just simply trade my plan. Okay? If I couldn't watch the markets, real simple. Real simple. I would look at the chart and I would actually plan the trade the night before. If the stock crosses above here, buy the entry, stop loss goes here. I'd come back the next night, look at the chart, and it literally was in the evenings when I got home from work. I'd look at the chart, adjust the trade if I needed to. If the trade never triggered, the trades were always good for the day. The entry signal was good for the day. If it didn't trigger, I had to evaluate the chart again, make that decision, do I enter the trade again for tomorrow? I just waited for the trade. Okay? I just wait for the trade. If it gaps up, I wasn't in the trade because I used a stop limit order. Okay, stop limit order says, pay this much, no more than this. Okay, stop limit order with a stop loss. I'm telling you, changed my life. Because I could plan those trades ahead of time and make my system mechanical. We scan, I told you guys about the 3-8 trap. Let me do something here real quick. Guys, um, you guys have been here an hour and 20 minutes. I don't want to keep you much longer. But let me, let me show you guys this. Um, well, here, I'm going to go over here to this chart. I'm going to remove all price. Let me give you a 10-second class on the 3-8 trap. Number one, stock has to be trending. Number two, we're looking for the price action where the three stays above the eight. By the way, these dots, this is a 17 EMA. Okay, it's a three EMA, eight EMA, 17 EMA. We're looking for a buy signal that occurs when the three pulls back, compresses in on that eight, and we're waiting for the buy signal to occur, okay? Now I want you to look at this chart. How many opportunities did this provide you, us with potential winning trades? Okay, those are the upsides. There's an upside, there's an upside. Over and over and over. Okay. Let's take a look at that discovery. Where's the winning trades in here, guys? You already know the pattern. We're looking for buy signals to occur here, 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 here. There you go. That's it. Now, how much scanning capability do you need to do that? It's simple, guys. Follow the trend. Okay, Val, it's pulling back. 
Okay, it's pulling back. So what are we going to be doing? Are we going to predict that it's going to be a buy here or are we going to wait and find out if it's going to be a buy here? That's right. We wait for the entry. I can't tell you if that occurs tomorrow or occurs clear over here. But I can tell you I can wait for it. Okay. Take a look at just the NASDAQ here, guys. Daily chart. Can you guys make money with that chart? As choppy and as crummy as the market has been. Entry signal, entry signal, entry signal, entry signal. Not an entry signal because the three crossed below the eight. Entry signal. Not an entry signal because the three crossed below the eight. So winning trade, winning trade, winning trade. No trade, winning trade, no trade. Just follow the, follow the pattern. If the stock gaps away, don't chase the trade. Wait for the next entry. It's not that hard, guys. We make it hard because we try. We, we so desperately just want to pit or predict. We so desperately just want to get the perfect entry, the perfect exit. Just show me the three stocks today that are going to make me money. But that's not the way the, work, the market works. We actually have to put in some effort here. KR is something that I've been bringing up here recently. Okay, let's look at this chart. Whoops, KR. You guys see any patterns here that might be productive? And if you've missed the trade, you've missed it. Okay, no problem. What do we do? We wait for the next entry. Let's go over here. We don't even have to look at price. Where's the next entry? When this rests and pulls back and holds, it shows us buyers. Just follow the trend. Guys, this works because we're just following price action. People will ask, well, how many people can do this and make this successful? And honestly, everyone. What criteria do I use to make my weekend list? First, I only look at stocks that are within a price range that I want to trade. Okay. No sense of me wasting time with charts that I'm not interested in. No sense of me wasting time with charts if I want to trade options that don't have good quality options. How many times have you guys looked at a great chart, go to find the options, the options stink? Okay, or it doesn't even trade options and you just wasted your time. Okay. So I filter it out. I filter it out to make sure that I, if it's options, I have enough open interest. I filter it out if it's going to be a stock trading list that it has enough volume. And then guess what, guys? I just do the work. I look at the charts and find out whether there's a quality trend there or not. That's it. I do the work. Yeah, it's work, right? It's our job. We have to work at it. And it's so easy. Can you guys see how this can just free things up for you? You don't have to be stressed out. You don't have to be guessing and gambling all the time. 
if you're picky and wait for the best trades, not every trade, we don't need too many winning trades every month to make a lot of money. Be picky. Make the trade. Do exactly what you want it to do or don't trade it. You'll enjoy your trading more. You'll make more money. And you'll you'll just have you'll you'll gain confidence in your trading. Okay? You'll gain confidence in your trading because it's so much easier to do. There's enough room for everybody doing this because it's just simple trend following and all we're doing is following institutions. Institutions have geared the market to have every advantage over us except a couple places. Okay? And those places are, if they show us where they want to go and we follow, they're in the thing they can do about it. Nothing. They can't do anything about it. Okay? The other thing that we have an advantage over them is we can be nimble. When the trend breaks, when the pattern is volatile or whatever, we can choose not to trade it. Find a trending chart, wait for the next entry into the trade. A couple years ago, guys, I, I did this as kind of a just a thing for uh, just showing folks that it could be done. I just took Coca-Cola and I just traded Coca-Cola. Very simple, boring stock. Okay, it was trending and I just traded it over and over and over with a small number of contracts. I didn't even get crazy with it. I made over $25,000 that year just trading Coke. Nothing else, just Coke. It doesn't take tons and tons of charts to do this. You don't have to search and and, and overanalyze and, and all this stuff. Just build a, build a quality watch list of stocks that fit you personally that are trending and wait for the next entry. Okay? Study that price action. Spend more time. You know, um, I say this every once in a while and I believe this to be true. You guys want the, you guys want the holy grail of trading? You've been looking at it your whole trading career, but you haven't studied it. The holy grail in trading is price action. If you can learn to read the price action of the chart, that is the holy grail. When price moves, we make money. And we do everything possible. We waste so much time doing everything but studying price action. If we just study price action, study the chart, we can start making money. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. I hope you got something out of this. It will, it is recorded. Um, when I get the chance, I'll get this rendered and we'll get it posted to the website. <clears throat> if this kind of stuff is interesting to you, if there's something that you think we could help you with, We'd love to have you uh, take a trial, be part of our community. Take a look at us, see what we can do. Okay, hit and run candlesticks, that's Rick right there. And myself. I've been at this since 5 a.m. this morning. I do this day after day after day. We both have a passion to help you become better traders. Okay. We, between Rick and I, we both do things a little bit differently. Everybody's their own kind of trader, okay? But if we can help you with this, if we can help you turn your trading around, please take a look at us. Try it. Give us a, give us a shot. Take a trial. They're cheap. Take a trial. And see if we can help you improve your trading. Okay, it's worth a shot, right? If it's not working, if you're looking at your account and saying, that's the perfect critic for your, 
for your trading right is your account growing or not if it is keep doing what you're doing if it's not it's telling us there's a problem we got to fix right be willing to change okay be willing to change David yes there will be an open house <clears throat> next week um, so you can come and join us for three days on Monday Tuesday and Wednesday 29th 30th and 31st of next week okay you'll want to come check that out and I really think guys you want to come and check it out maybe consider membership those kind of things because we're gonna be giving away we're gonna be giving away a three thousand dollar computer here soon you guys might want to check that out and I'm not a crummy these are great computers great computers and you can modify it do whatever you want okay next Monday Tuesday and Wednesday Maybe it's when the open house is, 29th, 30th, and 31st. Okay. Thanks for being here, guys. I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome for sticking around. Thanks so much. For Hit and Run Candlesticks, folks, and Right Way Options, folks, I'll see you bright and early in the morning. I'll be right back here at my desk, 5 a.m., putting out the morning market prep video. Everyone take care. I wish you all the best in your trading. Good night, everyone.